All right, folks, and welcome to something a little bit different. You are going to see all of this. So you can see the little thumbnail up there. You're going to see my sim rig. Uh, there has been uh, one person that has been very, very uh, consistent in asking for this. Uh, yep. 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 And uh, he's awesome, to be honest, because he has kept reminding me and kept me on my toes to get it done. So this is it finally done and dusted. So, yeah, hope you enjoy Right, so we're in the sim rig uh, room. Uh, we call it the DD because it's Dad's Den because I am a dad. I have two children. So anyway, uh, this is the rig tucked into the corner. This is our storage room because uh, it is half our garage. So you can see we've got shelving up there for our random storage of random all sorts. Toilet rolls are in there. I don't need to show you that because that's not what you're here for. But that is the door to the garage. So when I open the door for a bit of cooling from the garage, that's the door I'm actually opening because it's nice and cold out there. And it's normally quite warm in here, which is really, really nice. Uh, right, a bit of tour around here. We have two 3D printers over here. Uh, one big one, one small one. So you will see dotted around. You will see the rig with random little cable clips like this. Brackets that I've made button boxes that I've made, uh, holders for stream decks, all sort of things like that that I've made with 3D printers. They're very useful and I'm a bit of a tinkerer so it helps me out as well. Um, but yeah, I think we just get on and show you the rig. Right, so let's show you the PC. So I'll scoot over here. This one is the main sim PC. So this one does all the heavy lifting for the gaming and what actually gets shown on my three triple monitors here. So this uh, isn't too powerful, but it's, it's okay. It's an i7-9700, uh, I think it is. Uh, it's 32 gigs of RAM with a 2080 inside. So not the most uh, outrageous PC in the world, but it does the job. It's due for an upgrade, but uh, haven't got around to it yet. The second PC is the streaming and recording PC. So this is a little bit less powerful. So this has a AMD 2600 CPU in it. Uh, 16 gigs of RAM and it has a 2080 in it. Uh, sorry, not a 2080, a 1080 in it. I don't need that graphical power, so it's got a reasonable graphics card in there just to control OBS and things like that. Otherwise, green fans, obviously, because the color is green, so they've all got green fans in, and uh, yeah, they sit there quite happily, quite nicely, to be honest. So moving away from the PCs, we have just an ordinary laser jet printer just for printing out all sorts of rubbish. And we have some uh, compressed air just for getting rid of dust and stuff out the way. And we have some lube because it's always useful to keep lube to hand. <clears throat> anyway, uh, going on, the table that the sim rig, uh, that the PCs are actually on. So this originally was the Simlabs GT1 um, rig that I had. But I have done some modifications to it because aluminium profiling is very, very useful for that. So the big thing with this aluminium profile in here is this is the triple monitor stand that you can see here. So these are the uprights. And then from the uprights, I've made a framework around. And if you can see, there's a bar over here. And then literally use a bit of my old wardrobe to create like a table. And then that is what the PCs actually sit on. Because these monitors here, the very edge ones, are actually, uh, they, they weigh the thing forward. So it almost tilts into you. So having this lovely counterweight here actually works really, really well to actually spread the weight over the, the um, triple monitor stand. So we are under the rig and you can see we have the Husenveld Ultimate pedals. And uh, yeah, like these, bought these when they were on sales, when they were just before they were bringing out the Plus kit, which I did get the Plus kit. So you can see here the little module stand with a little 3D printed bracket. Remember I said I was going to mention stuff that was on my website? Yep, that is on my website. So it's a little bracket that holds the uh, control bolts just out of the way and on the aluminium profile, which is nice. As mentioned, throttle brake and clutch the clutch is very very nice it's got a nice little bit of a throw to it and the polymers if people are asking i'm using the green polymers so i do still have the plus kit polymers uh, in a box somewhere nicely there so i use the original polymers from the uh, ultimates uh, i find they're nice and stiff and they actually work really really well and i do like a stiffer brake pedal because i think that's a little bit better for me these shoes that i use right these little craft little rascals here so they're so just omp ks4 a uh, ks3 sorry's and they're just the cheapest shoes i could find online that had kind of a green color it's kind of more of a fluorescent yellow um but yeah i couldn't actually find any green ones so that's the nearest ones i could get these are only here solely to keep my feet warm. Aluminium profiling is metal and cold and I have metal pedals. So heat from my feet do disappear quite readily and easily. So keeping my tootsies nice and warm uh, help me do that. And obviously the metal isn't particularly nice and soft on your heel. Whereas if you have a look at the heel of the actual boots, you can see the actual sole runs under the heel. So they are very comfortable when your foot's in kind of that position. I'll move that one out of the way. So when your foot's in that position, it just makes it a lot more comfortable to do these uh, long endurance races that I long like to do. Right. I'm in my seat, which is a wonderful, comfortable seat. And this is what I see. So 
It's a bit of an awkward one to get in because there's not a bit of a gap, but this is what I see, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, who's that guy? Look at that. That's awesome. That is awesome. So we have the Fanatec DD1 sitting in there, and you can see my monitors are sitting on top of it. So most of the wheel is actually towards the, well, behind the monitors. We've got a Stream Deck there connected to the main PC, which are these three monitors you see here. Sorry, it's a bit close trying to get angles. I'll get some other screenshots as well going around. But this Stream Deck is also connected to the second PC, which is the little windows up here. So I wonder Right, we've had to put you on the floor because it is very snug here. Obviously, I'm in a corner of a room here, as you've seen from the uh, outboard shots. And uh, to try and get this perspective of everything, I've put you on the floor. So I hope you're comfy. Um, but as you can see, three monitors here. We've got a lovely little race going on, uh, IRO4 at Spa. We did kind of survive, but you'll probably see a spin in a moment. Um, steering wheel, stream deck, stream deck, stream deck, button box, because you could not have, uh, well, you need more buttons, let's be honest. Buttons are not enough. And you can see the main top monitor. So this is something you probably don't see from, uh, from my videos or anything, but this is what I normally run. So you've got OBS in the top left-hand corner. So you can see, well, I can see what I'm recording and streaming. So it's really useful. And then I've got race labs across the bottom. So we've got our standings here, our fuel calculator, and our relative. So you can see what positions we're in. So that's how I get race labs running on the second PC, which is very, very useful because it keeps my main screen just from the iRacing UI or any other sim for that matter. Um, it keeps it nice and clean and keeps you focused on racing. So that's the main one there. We have the Fanatec shifter, if you can see that in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. And we have a lovely car toy car from my son. So that's very useful. Let's chuck that over there. Um, this is the main thing, if you can see this from over here, this is the main thing that a lot of people ask for, is where I put my keyboard. So my keyboard is on a bit of my old wardrobe that I borrowed, and um, yeah, in a nutshell, it's just a bit thick of MDF stuff, and it is on rails. So I'll probably put some pictures on, because that's going to be easier to get the description there, but you can see these got some lovely rails here attached to the aluminium profiling and then it can pull all the way out. Obviously you can see there's not much difference between the steering wheel and the keyboard, but there is enough to get your hand in and do some typing from, you know, eye racing and things like that. But if I do actually want to do some work, then I can take the steering wheel off and it does come a lot more open, which is a lot, lot easier for me. Um, obviously video editing, things like that on this PC. So having the keyboard here and the mouse just over here is a lot, lot useful for me. And there'll be a very nice crash coming up in a moment. So uh, I'd imagine you might want to see that. So this was a spa race we did a uh, on Tuesday, actually, Tuesday morning. And you can see we're going in there and annoyingly, car 14 has a little bit of a spin and we can't go anywhere and we kind of mount him. And then he decides to drive forward into me, which is really, really handy. Right, so just under the bottom box. Now, I've hopped out my seat because this will be a bit better angle. So that is a ball track mouse. I think it's a Logitech one. Oh, yeah, you can see the sign there. Um, so that is for the second PC. So that's how I can easily uh, click around and change stuff on OBS with the mouse because I do have that one rather than using the wireless touchpad on the keyboard. The interesting thing down here, is these are actually where I store my steering wheel so i have a p1 rim there i have the bmw rim and obviously that holder there is reserved for the uh, f1 wheel that's actually on there these are my 3d printed uh, wheel holders they hold it vertically if i can get that on with one hand uh there we go so they hold it vertically i mean the ones with the quick release are better so the metal ones like there are a bit better because they'll actually clip into it because there is a recess there you can see for the ball bearings in there but they do also hold it the other angle as well. So no matter which way your aluminium profile is going, they will match the keyway for the sort of upright position and the 90 degree position, which is kind of kind of handy. Um, they can technically be mounted on walls as well and stuff, but yeah, I found them very useful to keep them there out of the way. Keep them off the floor. It can keep them relatively clean, um, so not getting dust from the floor and things like that. But yeah, I find them very useful. Sometimes if I'm mid-race, I'll just put them on the floor, but there we go. My headset now. So I use Sennheiser headsets. Uh, they are the HD something or others. What are they in there? There we go. The HD 598CS. Whatever that means. I've changed the ear cups on them for nice fabric ones. If you can kind of see that. If my hand's not in the way. My hand is in the way. That's bloody awful. Um, but yeah, them ones. They actually run on a USB DAC, which is... Um, a little bit of uh, hardware that you need for that. Uh, Thrustmaster sort of handbrake and shifter that I'm not kind of really using at the moment because I'm still trying to find a decent place to put it. Because obviously with the mouse and the keyboard here and everything, let's move that one out of the way. Um, can be a little bit awkward for space in here, particularly getting in and out of the rig. Um, I can't really put that at the moment. So I am trying to work out a place to that because it would be useful, for particularly the stupid rally cross races we're doing, to have a designated handbrake, which would be kind of handy. The DAC that I was just explaining there is hidden behind there 
So if you can just see that in there, there we go, camera's loving focus. I don't need it all the time, so that's why I you know, have it hidden away. There is volume controls on there, so that also includes the microphone that lives up there as well. So that controls the microphone and the headsets as well to give me a bit better audio and hopefully microphone quality, which I'm not recording microphone quality at the moment. I'm on a USB microphone plugged into my phone. So I hope that's adequate. Um, right, now you're in my lap. So you're kind of where my head would be, to be brutally honest. So we have the steering wheel right in front of us. Annoyingly, where I sit, you can't actually see the Fanatec screen, but I've never used it before. There is obviously details on there that you can look for, but I've never used it. So that is my sort of view that I see from day to day. So Stream Deck, and obviously that opens up all my lovely apps. So that is the main PC, and this is a Stream Deck for the second PC that I can control OBS. We have a very lovely little uh, homemade uh, power button for the DD wheel because the power button for the wheel is annoyingly on the back, but the DD2 does come with a power button at each stop. So made that. It is uh, it is on my website. <laughs> hint, hint. Um, but yeah, we I, I have made that in the past, and it works a treat. Technically, it voids your warranty because um, it's a third party one, and me kind of admitting this on here is kind of going to void my warranty with Fanatec. But I think this wheel is over five years old anyway. So it's out of warranty, annoyingly. Um, we have another little stream deck here that I do want to use for iRacing features. So this is connected to the main PC that's playing the game. And I do want to get some more features on there. So I have, so I have some already preloaded um, with little nice imagery that I found online and things like that to do very, very useful things. So we just got a uh, six button one here some YouTube functions, but yeah, I'm not using that at the moment. But again, as you can see, 3D printed mount, 3D printed mount, 3D printed mount. You're getting a theme here, aren't you, chat? Let's be honest, let's be, oh, 3D printed buttons as well. 3D printed my own buttons, lovely jubbly. Um, this is my other homemade button box. Uh, let me back up a little bit there. So this is actually um, connected to the main PC, obviously, and there's a little USB hub here. Now this is a USB-C uh, hub. It actually has four USBs. There's one there, and that's for the button box. This is for my little Simlabs light up there. And the other one, because I'm not driving, is for my pedals. So my pedals all go through this, and that goes to the USB-C on the main PC. So I can disconnect these as readily as one, because I don't want them plugged in getting three volts all the time, or five volts, I think USB is anyway. But yeah, these are some of the buttons I use. Obviously, so we've got some chat functions here, and we can do the volume and mute the chat as necessary. ABS TC, another another TC, and a throttle map as well. Start and ignition. Some of them are AC buttons, so uh, car ahead, car behind, cycle dash. Some of these are ACC buttons, like rain light on and off. Just useful to have another set of buttons right next to you, and it's got like a cardboard film over it. But this was a homemade one. I think I got the control board from Leo Bodner. I think they do a USB button box thing there. Um, and then these buttons are just from Amazon. But yeah, I, do, I, I you know... I'm all for spending nice money, but at the end of the day, I don't look at this very much. It's got a carbon fiber finish on it. I, I'm happy it works. This is the lovely, very, very expensive, no expense spared second keyboard for the PC. So this is for that top PC, and this is just a little uh, Logitech Bluetooth one. It lives up there, which is very, very handy. This arm that you see here is actually the Simlabs button box arm, I believe it was, and this Sim rig is the uh, GT1 Evo from SimLab. So not sponsored by them, I'm just telling you where I got the rig from. Also the triple monitor stand, but this has been heavily modified. So I think we're gonna to need to go outside the rig again and show you that. So right, we're back around the back and you can see the two PCs again. And I did wanna show you this. So this is where I apologize to Mr. Bootland about cable management because that's not my favorite thing to do. I try and keep it tidy the best I can, but with things getting added all the time and removed, I can't do that. So that is actually a little Arduino in there. And that is my SIM hub controller. So it's a bit overkill. It, um, it's a bit overkill for the, the, the two lights that I'm basically displaying, but that's what I run there. So that lives up there. Again, it's a 3D printed box that I've designed because I am design, designing something in the background. But you can see we've got trunk in here that hides all the cabling and there's a load of cabling over there because a lot of monitors, a lot of lighting, a lot of you know GoPro power and things like that all coming across here. So it does get pretty messy back here but I have tried to tidy it the best I can. Now, one of the things I really, really do like about this rig is that plug socket or that multi-plug. Now, spare one for charging all sorts, uh, DD1, focus, silly camera. I'm, hope, I'm recording this on my phone, so I hope it's decent quality. Anyway, uh, DD1, main PC, uh, second PC, uh, USB peripherals and the fan. So my cooling fan is very tactically mounted on a cardboard box. So that blows air across my feet. Luckily my feet don't stink. 
And then what it does is go straight under the keyboard up there and it goes up into me, basically. So that's it. Cold air sinks, doesn't it? So I want the fan on the ground to blow the cold air across me. And that really does help. And this is the power for it. So I can reach this from that chair there. I can reach around here and turn it on when I get a little hot. So when I say on stream that I'm getting a little bit hot and I need to turn the fan on, that's the button that I'm pressing. Good to know. I mean, this is why you're here, isn't it? This useful information. You can see, uh, if I move that out of the way, you can see right over the back there, that is the actual power supply for my wheel. I've actually mounted that to the aluminium profiling. So again, um, that's 3D printed, designed by myself, and uh, yeah, is on sale at various websites, including my own. <laughs> um, back here as well, you can see that white dot. That's actually the power button for the DD1. So you can see how awkward that would be to actually press when you're in sim. So that's why I've designed my own power button. Um, otherwise, it's just a mess of cables under here. But good news, they're in 3D printed clips again. You get, you're catching a theme here, aren't you? Let's be honest. So yeah, these are 3D printed clips that I got from Thingiverse. Very, very useful. So printed them off and it just keeps the cables tucked up and out of the way. So very, very handy. Right then, with that all done and dusted, I hope that's answered a lot of questions about what I use and why I use certain things in my sim rig that others may not. It's not the prettiest sim rig, don't get me wrong, but it is very functional and... Uh, I'm always about function over finesse, to be brutally honest with you. Um, yeah, if you do have any more questions, happily put them down in the comments. I will try and answer them best I can. And if it needs another video, then I'll do some other videos with some other questions. Um, I think that's about it. Otherwise, like and subscribe to that lovely YouTube stuff. And I'll catch you on the next one.